I got news for you. $100,000 in your first year as a real estate agent, it's actually really easy. And I broke it down. I broke it down to three things. And I can say this because I've done it. My agents have done it. It's, I've, I've replicated this. And, and after five years of doing this, I've broken it down to three things. But before I break down those three things, I need to give you a three foundational things. So six things total, but you really just need to you really just need the three things. And I wrote it out for you. Maybe you can go download this. Uh, maybe I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. All right. So let me literally just read this out to you. Um, I wrote this. Real estate can be very overwhelming, especially if you don't have a clear plan and strategy. I remember when I was new, I had no idea what to do. I was like Keller Williams. I was like, I, I, I have no clue what to do. This is literally going to break everything down. Um, don't take Ignite, don't take Bold, don't take those trainings. That's not going to get you anywhere. Do what I'm telling you here. If you understand these three things and uh, and you know how to get really good at them, dial in your systems and strategies, create, create habits around these three things, you can make over $100,000 in your first year as a real estate agent. So if you've been following me, um, you know I moved from Seattle to Texas and then I moved back to Seattle and I had to kind of start from scratch. And I made nearly $200,000 my first year back. And I kind of had to start over. It was all cold business that I sold. Uh, I, 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 all I did was cold business. So I had to generate new business. And I made nearly, nearly $200,000 my first year back. So before we get into the three things that you need to know, I would need to take you through three foundational things first. So first is the foundation of finding your why. To make $100,000 in your real estate in your first year in real estate is incredibly simple with a plan and strategy, but it's also going to be very difficult. You won't want to do the things I'm about to tell you, so you need a strong motivator. So ask yourself, what are you wanting to build for yourself in this business and why? What will that do for you? What is all this for? Your family? Financial freedom? To drive around in an Aventador, Aventador with a bust down AP with your hot new girlfriend? Girl, girlfriends, whatever your reason, your why is, you need to identify it because that's going to be the carrot you dangle on a stick in front of you to keep yourself going. This is literally like what's on your vision board that you need to see every day to be like, oh yeah, I want that mansion in the, on the whatever. You know, I, I, want, I want that kind of life. This is who I want to be. Yeah. Now, what sucks is this is not going to work most of the time. Actually, most of the time, your why isn't going to help. It's not going to be a strong enough motivator. That's why you need to build discipline. Maybe 50% of the time, 70% of the time, you're not going to want to do the things I'm about to tell you. And your why is not strong enough to push you forward. You're just not going to feel like doing the work. So it's going to be important to build discipline. You need to develop a grit that allows you to, to get to work no matter how you feel. And in order to do this, you need to build habits. I'm gonna be breaking down what your schedule should look like later, so stay tuned. But what you're going to notice is that every day is almost exactly the same. At a certain time, every day, you're gonna be doing a certain thing, and at noon, it's a certain thing, and later in the day, it's a certain thing. You have a routine or schedule or structure in your day. When you do the same things every day, it's easy to develop a habit, and when you develop strong habits, it can become very easy to stay disciplined. So let me tell you a little story on this. For two years uh, while I was running my team, I would hop on Zoom at 8 a.m. Every morning, 8 a.m. on Zoom, because I had to open up Zoom. And I did this for two years straight. Something happened where I no longer had to run that Zoom anymore. And I, but like, I would immediately wake up and then, and then get on, get on my chair, my computer at 8 a.m. And here's the thing, at, while the Zoom was running, I would get on my computer at 8 a.m., open the Zoom, and I would start dialing. I would start dialing. I would start lead generating. Every day for two years straight. And then when I stopped the Zoom, I still did it. It was weird not to do it. It felt like I was living my life wrong because I built that habit. And so when I didn't feel like doing things, I still showed up to do the work because it just was a habit for me, you know? Like for you, hopefully a habit of yours is to wake up, take a shower. You know, it would feel weird if you didn't. If you, it would, if you went to go to meet, 
an important person, it would feel weird to not take a shower. You would just immediately know to take a shower because that's, that's like a habit that you've developed in your brain unconsciously. So you need to develop, develop these into your business and your life. So you can do this by either like joining an accountability group, creating an accountability group, have a bunch of other agents with you that be, that are like, okay, guys, we're all going to show up at 8 a.m. to dial. You, you should be doing that. If you don't have something like that, if you want to join mine, you can actually hop onto my, if you hop onto the Conversion Academy, you can literally join me on Discord 8 a.m. every single Monday through Friday. I'm literally still on Discord. It's 6.30 p.m. I'm on all day just generating leads or working on my business at my chair at 8 a.m. Uh, give or take 20, 30 minutes. Who knows? Uh, but I'm here. I'm here working. I've developed this habit of at 8 a.m. I am at my computer generating leads. And that's a habit you need to develop too. You need to develop these kind of habits. All right, foundation number three, and then we'll get to the three actual things that make you money. Your beliefs, your actions, decisions, choices, and behaviors all come from what you believe about yourself or the people around you. And if your beliefs of whether you're deserving of success, money, love, clients align with what you are going for, it will be a smooth ride. Of course, life has its ups and downs, but it will be a relatively smooth ride. If you believe that you're deserving of everything, if you're, if you believe you're deserving of success, if you believe that you're deserving of love, if you deserve, if you, if you believe that you're deserving of whatever, you're going to get it. If you believe that you're going to fail, if you're afraid to fail, if you're afraid of success, if you, that you're not going to find success, that you're going to end up embarrassing yourself, that people aren't going to want to work with you, that money's hard to come by, it's hard to make, you're most likely not going to make it. If those are the things you believe, you're going to self-sabotage using avoidance behaviors like doom scrolling or just like being late, like cleaning your kitchen, walking the dog, going to the gym, basically doing whatever else other than what you should actually be doing to achieve the success. So you'll, it, it'll look like you're procrastinating. It'll look like you're lazy, but that's not really the truth. You're not actually lazy. You're just trying to avoid the failure you believe is unconsciously destined for you. And the crazy thing is your beliefs are a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you believe you're going to fail, you will do everything it takes for you to fail. You just, it's a, it's a magnet to you. All right. All right. So that probably sucked to hear for some of you, but those are the three foundations you need to set yourself up for a hundred K your first year. Hey, and if you're in this and you're like, well, I'm in my, I'm in my fifth year. I've made it more than a hundred thousand. Okay. Well, let's make you more money. If you understand this, you will make more money. So don't, don't be dumb. Now let's get to the meat. The three things you need to understand in order to make over a hundred K your first year. After I explain these three things, I'm going to show you exactly what that looks like in your day. All right. So thing number one, lead generation. Your entire day needs to consist of action. But not dumb, mindless, busy work you call action. I mean action like calling homeowners, generating new leads, following up with leads, setting appointments, practicing your scripts, going to meet with sellers and buyers, showing homes, getting listing agreements signed. These are all money-making activities. What this does not mean is going to stables to pick out the prettiest markers to write cute letters to your mom's friend. This does not mean spending eight hours designing your business cards and open house flyers. You need to be doing money-making activities. So here's what that looks like on a day-to-day -day basis using the, tw the same 24 hours we all have in a day. So 7.30 a.m., breakfast club. I'm going to tell you what that is later. 8 to 12 p.m., 8, 8, 8, 8 a.m. to noon, cold call homeowners with the goal of generating long-term seller leads and set appointments with anyone that may be ready to make a move now. If you want to learn exactly how to do this, I've made an entire step-by-step -step instructional video on how to do that. You should be trying to talk to as many homeowners as you can in this time to generate as many leads as you can to put into your CRM. These are the people you will be staying in touch with and following up with to represent them in a real estate transaction when they are eventually ready to do so. Lunch. Don't take too long. Be efficient. I order factor meals that I can uh, microwave I don't grocery shop, I don't wash dishes, I just heat it up and throw the plate away. Back to work. 
You can use my factor link to sign up for your own meals if you want. <laughs> I forgot I wrote that in there. This has been a game changer. I also get the keto meals so I don't get any brain fog from eating grains. That is a high level hack right there. All right, 12.30 to three, I'm back on my computer. This time I'm following up with the people I need to follow up with. I'm making sure nobody slips through the cracks. I'm calling the homeowners and the buyers I have in my CRM to see if they're ready to meet about selling their home, go see a home to buy, or if I can answer any questions and solve any problems they may be having from going to the next step of buying or selling their home. The goal of following up is to set an appointment with them or get an update on their plans. 3 to 7 p.m. are my appointment times. I stack all appointments in this time. This is the only time frame I leave my house. I don't leave my house for anything else. It's a waste of time. Stack all my appointments in one run. Don't leave the house at 10 a.m., come back. It takes too long to get ready to leave the house and to come back and then get back into work mode. Then you gotta do it again at 3 p.m. and then at 6 p.m.? Nope. Try to hit all your appointments in one go. It's not always possible and that's okay. If I don't have any appointments within this, within this time, I am continuing to follow up. And if I don't have anyone to follow up with, I am generating more leads. My workday is just these three things. Also try to sneak in a dinner somewhere here. So obviously like if you've got transactions running, um, you need to like take some time to uh, do admin work. You know, you have to do that. Pick like 1 p.m. to do that. But that can be ignored during lead gen time. You know, if, if you're if you're like if you're in, if your buyer's inspection comes back or your seller's inspection comes back and they're like, Aaron, this, this, there's there's a pro the water heater's broken and the, the according to the inspection, that's fine. Don't read that email. You don't need to address that yet. It'll be there at 1 p.m. At 8 a.m. you should be busy lead generating. Nothing gets in the way of the growth of your business. Lead generation is the growth of your business. You can't grow your business if you're not lead generating. So the results of the septic inspection can wait. Nothing's gonna change about that. Oh, the lender needs a thing? The lender needs a form 34? Okay, wait. Wait, all right, okay. After 7 p.m. is the time to do things like work on your business, on your business, not in your business, on your business. You've been working in your business in the entire day. You've been, you've, you've been working in your business up to now, and now it's time to work on your business. Work on creating and building your systems during this time. Look into a Grant Cardone email sequence training so you have emails to drip down to your seller leads. Look into hiring VAs or lead generation companies in this time. Write your letters you want to send out to your new hot leads you found. Write out the email you're gonna blast out to your database. Work on your listing presentation graphics, your business card designs, flyer designs, practice your scripts with a partner. These are the things you wanna work on at night while it's socially weird to call strangers. Don't do these things at 2 p.m. when you should be making calls. And that's your work day. And by the way, this is what every day should look like. If you can do this every day for 90 days, you're gonna build a very strong habit that will be hard to break. This is exactly what you want. You want it to feel weird if you're not in front of your computer calling homeowners. The great thing is that I have a Discord community where me and my agents all cold call together. It keeps things fun. It's a form of accountability. It gives me a place to come to every day and you should be on there too. You can gain access to this by joining the Conversion Academy or joining me within the UN group at EXP Realty. All right. Oh man, there's two more things, but this is the money-making thing. These are the money-making things. Conversion rate. This is extremely important. This is what dictates how much opportunity is created from the massive action you take on the previous, on the first thing. This is the ability to convince someone to work with you. A lot can happen from the action you take, or a little can happen from the action. The same amount of action you take, a lot can happen or a little can happen. If you speak to 100 homeowners and I speak to 100, I speak to the same 100 homeowners, you and I will have a very different result. That's because you have a certain rate of conversion and I have a certain rate of conversion. You want to have a high conversion rate so you can identify an opportunity when you see it. You don't want to you don't want to let it slip through your hands. You want to identify an opportunity when you see it and squeeze out the greatest outcome from each opportunity. Because why would you want to put in all this work to get mediocre results? 
In order to increase your conversion rate, you need to know exactly what to say and how to say it. You need to understand the framework of how to convert a lead. This is the exact thing I teach step-by-step -step and break down within the Conversion Academy. Also, remember that the remember the breakfast club thing at 7.30 a.m.? That's a daily high-intensity role-play training taught by my coach designed to turn you into a razor-sharp appointment setter. Oops. If you learn what's inside the Conversion Academy and the Breakfast Club and practice these things daily, you will increase your conversion rate. So in order to get good at your conversion rate, you need to practice that. You need a role play partner. You need someone to give you real life, real life resistance. And you need to be able to practice. You need to rehearse the framework, the script, the objection handlers over and over and over and over again until it comes out like, a, like an automatic response. It's all memorized. There's no, um, uh, there's no like hesitation in the responses that you give. Every piece of resistance, every objection that the seller gives you, you should have an auto response for that. You shouldn't be practicing on your actual leads. Practice with a role play partner. And if you need a community of agents that are really good at role play, hop into the academy. Third thing is time, okay? All right, so let me get a few things straight. If you just have one of these three things, which is massive action lead generation, conversion rate, and time, if you just have one of these things, you will fail. You are going to fail. If you have two of these things, you're going to do good. If you can have three of these things, you are going to win so hard. If you have lead generation and conversion rate, like if you're seeking opportunity and good at convincing them to work with you, you're going to do great. If you have a high conversion rate and you put in a lot of time and you've been in the business for a long time, but you don't lead generate that much, you will do okay. If your conversion rate sucks, if you can't convince people to work with you, but you're lead generating and you've been in the business for a long time, you're going to do okay. But if you combine all these three things, you're going to do very, very well. So time through lead generation, you're going to be stacking leads that aren't ready to move because the reality is most leads you run into will not be ready to make a move for quite some time. Don't get discouraged because as you build your database of leads in your CRM, you will slowly stack buyers and sellers who may be ready to move a few months, a few years out. Many months later, as you follow up with your not ready yet leads, you will find that you suddenly have a bunch of seller ready, uh, a bunch of sellers ready to list their homes. This is the result of time. Time can be used to your advantage by lead generating consistently, stacking these leads of people that aren't ready yet. Time can also be effect, can also affect you negatively if you do not lead generate. Your pipeline will dry up. Your business will produce no sales. Your business will not produce sales and you will run out of money. Do not let time affect you negatively. Lead generation and taking advantage of every opportunity that comes your way by developing a high conversion rate. Oh, lead generate and take advantage of every opportunity that comes your way by developing a high conversion rate. Do this for a long time and sustain period of time to maximize your results. Okay, that's all I wrote. <laughs> Not a smooth ending. But guys, if you really understand these three things, lead generation, the conversion rate, and time, aka creating opportunities, convincing people to work with you, and then staying in the business for a long time, you are going to win so hard. Before you do that though, make sure, make sure your foundations are right. Understand why you're doing this. What is the carrot on the stick? Build the habits to create discipline and then align your beliefs with where you're trying to go. Identify anything that's stopping your way mentally. If you can understand, if you can make the three foundations work for you and then lead generate, have a high conversion rate and be in the business for a long time, you are going to make a lot of money. 
I hope this helped. Check out the links below, Conversion Academy, join in, come dial with me on Discord, learn how to have a high conversion rate. You need to do this. I'll see you in the next video.